Georgia just smacked TCU. Absolutely destroyed the Horned Frogs in the national championship game on Monday night in SoFi Stadium. 65-7. to And Georgia even missed an extra point at the end. I mean, this was it, this was so one-sided. I, I can't, I don't even really know where to begin with it. Uh, it is the most dominant performance in a title game that I have ever seen. And looking back on it, I mean, we all knew. We all knew the difference in the talent here. We saw when Georgia is focused, when they are ready, and they are going up against a team that is outmanned. I mean, we saw it in game one against Oregon. This is just a dominant dominant football team uh, from a talent perspective, from a coaching perspective, from a developmental perspective. This team is awesome. Uh, I'm going to pull up on the screen just to kind of show you first off. We we got a lot of things to talk about with this game, but Stetson Bennett, 18 out of 25 for uh, 304 yards, four touchdowns passing, no interception. I mean, the guy was awesome. He also ran the ball three times for 39 yards and two touchdowns. Stetson Bennett was the MVP of this game. That makes him a four-time playoff playoff game MVP. The guy is unbelievable. Is he a dynamic NFL talent? Probably not. Is he an unbelievable college quarterback? Absolutely. And the fact that he's 25 years old, yeah, that probably helps a little bit. The guy's been around the block. He knows what's going on in these games. He He's incredibly smart. His, his IQ on a football field is way, way up there. Is he going to play in the NFL? Probably. Is he going to be a starter in the NFL? Probably not. Like, he doesn't have the best arm, but he's got a really good one. He doesn't always make the best decisions, but when he's in a high-pressure situation, he does. I mean, my goodness, the, the guy has grown so much from what he was in that 2020 season. It is just mind-blowing to see, even, even from last season. If you watched him against Alabama, when Georgia needed him to be able to come back and score points, he was confused. He did not look great. And yet this year, I mean, he was, I think he was the team in MVP. He was unbelievable. And so Stetson Bennett, I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. This was the most points scored in a national championship game in history. It was the biggest, if, if you count this as a bowl game, it was the biggest margin of victory in a bowl game ever. I mean, it. <laughs> I don't know how many more ways you can spin this thing. I mean, it was just, uh, this thing got to 10 to nothing. And then TCU makes a little run. There was a blown coverage by uh, Georgia's secondary. TCU scores a little Max Duggan, uh, you know, not not necessarily a designed run, but eh, he seeps through and finds his way into the middle of the defense and and scores a touchdown. It's 10-7. to TCU could not get a stop on this offense. And this offense is not the one that is, you know, super loaded with talent. I mean, this was Ladd McConkey and Stetson Bennett. Like, these are guys that have been developed. Like, yes, they've got some burners. Yes, they've got some good running backs. The biggest difference in this game was that the line of scrimmage. Football is still fundamentally the same game that it has been since, you know, the the late 1800. If you are better at the line of scrimmage, more times than not, you are going to win the football game. And Georgia is the best in the country at developing linemen. They are unbelievable. They are nasty. They've got attitude. And they have push. I mean, good gracious. Uh, TCU's offensive linemen had no idea what to do with that defensive line. No clue. And the same could be said for TCU's defensive line. That 3-3-5, that Joe Gillespie spill and kill, has been fun to watch all season. It had no chance in this game. No chance. They could not get home. Absolutely not. They Stetson Bennett baited some of those guys into these rushes that he turned into yardage. I mean, it was just, it was masterful to watch. And what Todd Munkin has done with that offense is just something to behold. Like, if he stays there again this year, if he doesn't end up in the NFL, if he doesn't whatever, this guy knows football. He knows offense. He has taken the pieces that he has and created just an unstoppable force with it. It, Just unbelievable what they were able to do in this game. Uh, Kirby, if you haven't gone on Twitter, go and find Kirby's locker room speech. You want to talk about fire. You want to talk about running through a wall for a coach. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not safe for work. We're not going to play it on the show. But this man gets this man knows what's up and it's very very entertaining to listen to, or to listen to uh next thing i want to talk about oh georgia middle of the third quarter georgia released their hypno dog video on twitter <laughs> now, i'm not gonna show it but man uh you want to talk about nuts i mean just the fact that they did it in the third quarter like early third quarter uh i was a little shocked that they didn't wait until the end of the game just a little bit shocked because i know how kirby smart is like he he's one of those guys that's not uh the game is over when it's over like you play the entire 60 minutes you do not celebrate you don't do anything like that until the clock's hit or the clock hits zero period 
And that just, I mean, it floored me, floored me. Uh, I did want to bring this up. So cover two figures, the, this guy on Twitter, he has got just a beautiful, beautiful graphic that he uses every now and then. Uh, this is the, the drive chart, the drive map. And you see how many Georgia drives actually turned into touchdown. Like it's, it's mind blowing to look at this. So if you want to see it, like, obviously you can go to at cover two figures or just go and follow me at Gary WCE on Twitter, of course, because uh, I, I shared it out. But man, uh, Georgia scored on 10 of 11 drives, not including kneel downs, uh, and they had touchdowns on 9 of 11 drives. TCU only managed one drive inside the 40-yard line. Like, they did score on that one, so that's good. But they they could get nothing done. Nothing done. It just it, it blew my mind to see this. Georgia's average starting field position was their own 34. TCU's their own 23. Echo rate? which are drives with the scoring opportunity, that's that's Parker's thing, uh, 0.92 for Georgia and 0.08 for TCU. Uh, total EPA per drive, Georgia 2.68, TCU negative 1.79. It, I, 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 can't, I can't make it any any brighter than that. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. What, what we witnessed was complete and total domination in this game. Just unreal to see what happened. Uh, and then, of course, towards the end there, you all saw the rain coming into SoFi Stadium, which it, it rarely rains in L.A., but when it does, eh, you know, SoFi has a has a roof over the stadium. It's a roof over the field. They don't have walls. So that storm came in, and it was only raining on TCU fan. I mean, just adding insult to injury. Adding insult to injury. I did want to hit on this. A lot of players were bringing up the fact that, and this, uh, how about this? We'll start this over, because I, I do want to maybe clip this. Georgia players, especially Stetson Bennett, have said multiple times that everybody doubted us. And the media just laughs it off as, yeah, 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 you were doubted. You were number three in the country. Like, yeah. At one point this season, you were number three. You you got doubted, of course. Everybody doubted you. The media laughs it off. The truth of the matter is, yes, a lot of people doubted these guys, myself included. Like, and now, I, I still knew that there was talent on the roster, but in the preseason, I had them losing to Tennessee. I had them losing one game. I had them losing in the SEC championship game to Alabama. Uh, I did not predict them to win back-to-back championships. So, yes, I did doubt them. And for them to be able to perform at the level that they did, they have to have that chip on their shoulder. They had to feel like they were doubted. And, yes, again, they were doubted. They lost 15 guys to the NFL last year. How could you not be doubted? There, as soon as that national championship game was over, myself included, along with a lot of other media members, were trying to figure out whether or not Georgia was going to start a different quarterback. We didn't believe in Stetson Bennett. So yes, there was doubt. For people to say that there was no doubt in Georgia is comical. Just go back a few months. It was not that long ago. Yes, people doubted Stetson Bennett. Yes, people doubted this Georgia team. It, should we have? Eh, you go back and watch that Ohio State game, and eh, you go back and watch the Missouri game. Eh, you know, it's not like this team was completely dominant like this all season. Obviously, there were doubts, but... But they obviously ended up one of the best football teams that we have ever seen. 15-0. and 0. That's pretty difficult to do. This team is 29-1 and 1 in the last two seasons. They got two national championships. They've got a strong, strong case. How about this? A strong possibility of going, you know, back to back to back. Three-peat, if you will. That's it. Kirby holding up that third finger last night was comical. He was, he was playing to the crowd. He was playing to the crowd. What is next for TCU after just a complete and utter uh, beating? Well, uh, I think that this season could be could be looked at as a good thing, right? Obviously, I mean, you make it to a national championship game and you're TCU, uh, especially year one of a coach's tenure, that's a good thing. Uh, you made it to the national championship game with a coach that you did not expect, or excuse me, with a quarterback that you didn't even have starting in game one. Let's, uh, let's pull up what this team is losing. They're losing a four-year starter at quarterback. They're losing more than 70% of their rushing attempts. They're losing more than 70% of their passing targets, at least two offensive line starters, and that doesn't even account for defense. Of course, this uh, tweet from Parker at Stats of War, I mean, it, Parker said this roster was at the top of its development cycle in both 21 and 22, thanks to the COVID year. Like, it's, this team was set up right now. You're going to lose Quentin Johnson. You're losing Max Duggan. You know, the two names on the team. You're probably going to lose the running back, Kendra Miller. You're losing DeMarcado. You're losing linemen. You're losing some of those transfers that came in for one season. It's going to be tough. However, 
what this did was show that TCU is a good program for other players. It helped with the recruiting. It helped with the transfer portal. You saw all the guys that they have already gotten in the transfer portal, and they're just going to keep bringing them in. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be back in the Big 12 title game again next year. Uh, a lot of that depends on the quarterback situation, etc. But this demolition that they just suffered in the national championship game does not take away from how much fun this season was and how good that program can be in the new Big 12 going forward. I look for big things from TCU going forward. So I think that this is going to be a whole lot of fun uh, once TCU kind of kind of wipes the stain of this off of them, you know, they'll get home back to Fort Worth, they'll take a shower, and they'll be able to celebrate a little bit the hypnotoad and everything else that this season brought. Um, I did have a lot of fun with the the fact that Gary Patterson was actually in the audience last night. I said, you bring Gary Patterson back in the building, this is what happened. Uh, it's all in jest, obviously, but this program is headed in the right direction. Uh, Sonny Dykes, obviously a good coach, doesn't look like they're going to lose any of their coaches right now. I mean, obviously, we'll see. Who knows? But yeah, this is this is a team and a program that is headed in the right direction. Nothing to hang their heads about about this season. Not at all. Not at all. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.